반갑습니다. 옴 샨티 비스 투 유 비스 투 미 Hello and welcome to another video. My name's Peter and today I want to talk about don't shoot the messenger. <coughs> <laughs> Whoa, does that happen quite a lot in today's world? This is uh, March 2020, in case you're seeing this video in the future. And we've just had an enormous coronavirus scare. Massive, come out, massive. Talking about global pandemics, they're shutting down areas of the world, and it's incredible. And then you have a brave man like Dr. John Bergman coming up with a video entitled, I am not scared of the coronavirus. Now, I'm sure so many people looking at him go, who does he think he is? Hey, eh? who does he think he is? But I got so much from that video. I learned that the coronavirus would die. Once it's been on your hands for 10 minutes, it will be dead actually lives in the in the lungs so if you take high dosage vitamin C and keep that area warm so drinking hot water intestine exercises or manipulating the gut sit-ups keep, keep it warm that virus won't survive in your body you're building up your immune system taking high dosage vitamin C kept your vitamin D3 intake up through tablets it's spread by uh, RNA RNA virus so information really important information that is given out to me and all these other subscribers that isn't being given out by the mainstream media because they're starting to bring in the vaccine we will have the vaccine for the coronavirus you can't look up look at you can't heal yourself you can't heal yourself we are the World Health Organization. I am the Chief Medical Officer of Britain, United Kingdom. You can't question me. We're going to have the video. We're going to have the virus controlled and contaminated by a vaccine. And then I a, we went out for dinner re recently, and a friend said to me, "I've got a conspiracy for you. Did you see that Dettol making billions, billions out of this?" coronavirus by disinfecting cleaning the hands and toilet rolls apparently <laughs> fortunately people in the UK are buying toilet rolls by the bucket loads at the moment oh my goodness me so don't shoot the messenger I didn't shoot John Bergman for saying what he said I listened to what he said I actually went into the research that he'd done into the Lancet uh, I think there was a British medical journal that he'd done he'd looked into and, and shown all this stuff that was coming out of, about the coronavirus which are perceived experts in the medical industry in the World Health Organization and the UK I'm not talking about not empowering you as human beings just putting the fear of God into you they're just making you scared <gasps> like some of the places I've been into community centers up no hugging no hugging please wash your hands before you come in I mean yeah that's that's a sensible precaution it is really starting to spread across the UK especially in Surrey but no hugging I mean if, if I'm in that room anyway people probably will catch it so I don't know John Bergman standing up and speaking I found myself doing that as well apologizing for the information that I'm sharing I'm sorry I'm gonna, I have to share my research here I'm sorry that I have to do this I know it's going to upset you I remember that happened when there was the referendum uh, debate about uh, being members of the European Union, either leaving or being members of the European Union. And I didn't really want to get in involved with the polarity of the argument. I believe in sovereignty. I believe the sovereignty starts as you as a human being. I, you look after yourself first and then your family. And then once you look after your family, you can look after your community. Once you look after your community, you can look after your county, or in America, your state. Once you look after your county, you can look after your country. Once you look after your country, you can look after your continent. Once you look after your continent, you can look after the world. We've got it the other way around at the moment with some maniacs who want to look after the world without actually starting with looking after the individual. And that's what I, one of the major problems I have with the European Union is the sovereignty. So 
someone stopped me outside of a train station. I wasn't going to get involved with the conversation, whatever. And they were pro European Union and they started talking to me and I just ripped it apart within four or five minutes, just ripped the whole thing apart with the research that I'd done on it. And so, well, I'm actually really seriously concerned about this. And they had no answers for me. They just wanted me to move on. And I was building a crowd around me because they were interested in the information that I was sharing. They weren't shooting me as a messenger, but the people who were trying to be pro-EU were shooting me as a messenger. Perceived liberals, so-called liberals, who were like saying, no, no, you can't speak like that. And I said, well, that's what I mean. You can't prove I'm right or wrong. This is my research that I've done, and this is why I feel that this entity needs to go because of what's happened, many, many different reasons. And I've had many friends who have been pro-EU that listen to what I've said and they've realised that actually that makes sense. Makes great sense. So it's your individualness that actually is the beginning of your sovereignty, not an enormous entity that oversees everything, that makes everything the same, homogenises everything. No, we're individuals. That's where the life and the colour and the spirit comes from. <laughs> Otherwise it becomes grey. 1984. Oh. Brave new world. No feelings, no emotions. If you have an emotion, you take a tablet to keep it calm. So all of this is really stopping people having the confidence to speak now. People are scared of talking. And, and that political correctness came from California with the Frankfurt School people which came from Germany and they moved over to California and that's where this whole PC explosion has come from so that you can't speak what you feel anymore you can't say certain words without it causing a, an offence and you hear these perceived liberals coming on the radio and, and saying well this is how it's got to be surely coming back to common sense or common law do not hurt or harm anybody or anybody else's property is enormous. And yet we need all these little laws that do this. And it's really the fault of the police. And it's not even their fault because they, when I went to the Bilderberg protests, when it was over in Watford, we had a really amazing relationship with the police and we were talking about common law and their oath to their office and how they agreed with everything that we were saying and they said I don't know because what they're getting from outside i.e. the EU um, corpus juris they didn't know what the law was anymore so they didn't know whether we were breaching the peace or not breaching the peace it was incredible to see that opening of information but they didn't shoot us for giving them information they didn't shoot the, the messenger in fact it expanded their wisdom it expanded themselves as human beings and made them look at actually what's really going on in the world at the moment and once you realize that you can start to change it because by changing it by any political mean any religious mean it's just not going to it's not going to work because once you get into the bigger institutions you are going to be intimidated by groupthink groupthink it's incredibly powerful I went to a council meeting, we were talking about an anaerobic digester being put next to this beautiful little village in Surrey. And I found a massive conflict of interest by an MEP in, in the, obviously the British MEP, but she, she was also part of the company. She was on the board of the company who was getting the business from the EU to actually set up this anaerobic digester, uh, digester which was like a massive enormous conflict of interest and I went to this meeting and I couldn't believe my eyes I couldn't believe my eyes I said there was three experts and there's supposed to be three independent experts but two of them worked for the council one of them worked for CETA the company who was trying to put in this anaerobic digester and you're going I put my hand up and said firstly do you understand about the corruption that's come from the EU from this and then secondly look at your independent advisors on this so i had the whole crowd rallying behind me at this meeting and as soon as one of the council 
members stood up and went blah 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 put them straight back into group think straight back into their boxes and just sit there and listening in a dazed manner again we get intimidated by group think don't be yourself be individual break the trends nothing changes unless you move trends out of what they're doing at the moment that's the most important thing and don't shoot the messenger if someone's coming up with information that is contrary to your belief system listen if it's a load of rubbish then you can say well oh, it's just it's a load of rubbish mate the, 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 the moon's made of cheese no I don't think. what is the moon made of that's a very interesting question and what is it another very interesting question it's not what we think it is I know that but don't shoot the messenger let's talk to each other rather than fight with each other and be with each other be human beings together do the journey inside find yourself raise your vibration keep smiling and shining your love into this world thank you for listening I hope you enjoyed this video if you got something out of it please like and subscribe and I'm sure I'll see you in the next video Sarang Amida Oh,